little bit. Um, I've wrote uh, the article for the newsletter, so you probably already read it. So Henry B uh, was born in China and um, studied uh, painting under Zhang Zhen In mm -hmm. and uh, in Nanjing, and uh, he studied archaeology at Nanjing University and became a fellow of the Center for Oriental Painting and Calligraphy in 1983. Henry came to U.S. in 1987 to study in the University of Washington, and he taught traditional Chinese brush painting and calligraphy at UW's Experimental College, and later he taught culture and history classes of China, Japan, and Korea at Western Washington University. Um, in 1997, Henry moved to Los Angeles and worked as a digital graphic artist for 10 years. In 2007, he went back to traditional ink and watercolor media. And in 2010, he became a full-time Chinese brush painting teacher and supplier. And he has a website, it's blue, blueheronarts.com. Um, so um, so welcome Henry, and thank you for our uh, presenter today. And uh, we are all very excited to be able to spend this time with you. And uh, we are your fans and we've been watching your YouTubes and I know you have hundreds, thousands of students all over the world. So we're very uh, honored to have you at our meeting today. Thank you, Henry. Thank you, Alice. Um, yeah, we, we just shared uh, this uh, memory moments ago uh, before the meeting that uh, is like a, a feeling uh, of a home uh, with your Kyojisan Semi Artist Group. That's where I started uh, the first exhibition, I, uh, group exhibition I attended, I think, other than the, uh, the first solo one, the first year I came to Seattle uh, in 1987. Uh, so um, one of the painting uh, you can see here down the Bottom received a uh, best of uh, show, a uh, best of Soviet uh, award. So it was always on my uh, CV, <laughs> on my resume uh, as an owner. So I'm so honored to come back to uh, home. <laughs> okay, um, that's my early picture of. Uh, and this is the ceremony receiving the award in the opening. Um, I'm going to start with uh, um, blue heron. Um, the, uh, the bird is an uh, American bird. I right? uh, used to paint cranes. Uh, a great, great, uh, great uh, blue heron is a symbol of uh, U.S. Uh, one of the, the icon of U.S. I think in North America. So we've got a uh, blue heron in Seattle in the on the lakes. Um, I always see them. So, um, and uh, you can see I'm wearing a shirt uh, today. It's as uh, uh, painted with uh, acrylic on, on T-shirt, and I mm -hmm. uh, I. I think in 89 summer, I started this business of uh, attending uh, the uh, arts craft shows. Uh, I was so lucky that I got into the Bellevue, uh, not Pacific Northwest show, as I forgot the name, but there are three shows on the same weekend. I entered the one in the uh, Nostrum, right? The, the underground part. I was told that it was a very, very high, sp uh, class uh, show, you know, um, so I, I made greeting cards at, in that show. And after that, I, I attended, uh, uh, attended uh, Edmunds, uh, Kirkland, uh, lots of shows uh, selling t-shirts. I sold hundreds of them every summer. So probably, I also attend, uh, I uh, sell in church and uh, boutique, you know, uh, and I love the atmosphere, the, I mean, the art atmosphere um, in Seattle. There's no such uh, 
street fair in LA. <laughs> I tried, but it's too hot in summer. <laughs> so it's much nicer to, to have street fairs as in summer. I miss them. Yeah, I wish I could do that again sometime. Uh, so, um, Blue Heron was so, not, yeah. Sorry, um, I would like to ask Sally uh, are you able to record this meeting with us? It, Sally? It is, it's being recorded now. It's recorded. Okay, thank you. You can mm -hmm. see the, the icon on the corner. Okay, um, so to basically, I used the uh, um, I, I paint them, you know, on the street. I, I did the uh, cats, so we're going to learn that. I also have cat shirts still, uh, and I I'm not sure I did the goldfish, but uh, this cat is also one of the uh, they call it the smiley cat, smile cat. cat. Um, I have another one. It's greedy cat. It's one of my best sellers my early design of the t-shirt. So uh, also pandas, you know. Um, so I, I, by repeating uh, this design, I refine them, you know, I developed my own style, so to speak, uh, just by painting t-shirts. <laughs> so um, practice makes, uh, makes perfect, I guess. So it, it just forced me to paint, you know, to, to paint a lot. Um, Anyway, um, I, I got a handout of a painting. Uh, yeah, these are the, some pictures I just found online, just showing you the, the birds. Okay, what's the handout? There's a step by a uh, stroke guide. Let me see. Oh, I couldn't find it. It's in the, it's on in the, the, uh, uh, in the with the, the red uh, stroke. Uh, let, me, let me just do it uh, this way. So if you, if you can, uh, as I said last night, I forgot to put it in this folder. So basically, we start from the, the back of the, the bird. And I use a soft brush. You can use a large one. We have a, um, a brush called the Super Wash. Super Wash. Um, you can use a basic soft brush or combination brush, which is usually white. Um, I have these large ones that can also be used. Depends on the size of the, the, the paper. So the paper I'm using is only uh, 9 by 13, something like that. Maybe 8 and a half by 13. So it's a, a one twelfth of the four sheets. This is a, like a 13 and a half by uh, 17. So this is a smaller. Okay, I use uh, um, some some blue color just to get a touch of blue. Uh, you can use a little mineral blue if you if you have the Maris Chinese painting color. There's a number uh, on the tube. It will be 493. 493. Uh, you can also add a little indigo or or um, uh, cello blue. Let me just use this a little cello. Cello is a little strong, uh, more as a li little stronger than uh, than the uh, indigo. So I guess I got some here. That's okay. So there's some leftover ink from uh, from pure previous project, maybe a calligraphy class. So uh, it's okay. We just add a little ink to. I got some leftover ink, so that's okay to get the gray, blue gray, and I touch a little bit, a little bit uh, uh, indigo or cello. Cello is kind of too strong. We have to. Add a little more ink, I think, just to just a tiny little bit, you know, just like this much, this much, just the corner. Of it. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. So blend, uh, blending color and load it to, uh, on the brush is a basic uh, um, uh, skill, and you learn by doing it. I, uh, let me just show you. So. You can just do one to begin with. Forget about uh, the two. 
we'll just do the one. Okay, we start with this uh, back, and look at uh, the movement. I I go I I tuck in the the tip of the brush, um, it's by going uh, from inside of the the back, not not along the side. Not, you don't draw like like that. So you go you pinch the surface. So you go up and then down. Okay, basically that's the movement. And uh, you need to uh, maybe you know make some uh, control lines. You can draw uh, with your fingertip just a, 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 a triangle, an upside down triangle. So there's a, uh, and then you can draw a small triangle for the for the neck above. So just like that, and you have to go fast. Because this is unsized shot, unsized is a uh, absorbent. And you can see the the stroke or just just like a fold. Um, because the the brush is so wet and you have to move fast without uh, hesitation and let it bleed. Um, if you want, you can use a piece of. Uh, Hello. Yes, this is she. Please mute yourself if you're not speaking at the meeting. Thank you. Uh, uh, I just have to shut off this lecture. Sorry. So the the next um, part is the the head and the neck. Okay. Are you painting along or just uh, watching me? Should I go slower? Uh, that's okay. Just okay. Uh, continue. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, to let me know if uh, I'm doing too fast or too slow. Okay. So uh, basically, it it's a uh, folded. Right. We just do the. You can separate the stroke from uh, with the, the one stroke for the for the head and then uh, the neck or you can continue just to imagine you're writing uh, a, a flips character or a number uh, figure two or z okay so just you, you think about the pass so you don't when you do it without a, a hesitation and i need to be careful with the, the the neck part, I got already got part of that. Uh, it's like shoulder, so it, it should be shouldn't be too too broad, right? Like just, and then you can go slow if you use a uh, a tissue or paper towel. Dry the the brush a little bit, the bottom of the brush. Take some moisture away, so the brush is a little drier, and it give you more time to do it. And uh, remember the triangle shape. So you just go like that. Fold the stroke and go down and just pre, uh, just overlap. Let it overlap. Uh, overlapping creates some darker tones. That's fine. And you can use blotting paper immediately. This is so important. This step. Without it, um, it will smear too much. And you can use just a tissue if you don't have a. Um, and, and, you know, I use some uh, scrap paper, and you can just use tissue. Paper towel has texture, so I don't like text. I use paper towel. Okay. Um, you can change to a smaller brush. Let's say we use a calligraphy brush. You can use uh, the basic stiff brush, a wolf hair brush. This is a new one. Called General One's uh, calligraphy brush, medium size. Okay, and it's good for doing the beak and the legs. It's a stiff brush, so I soak it first. Always soak the brush first, otherwise it will not point it. And uh, take some moisture away. And then um, let me show you the the. Okay, can you see my? Nice. 
that you cannot really see. Okay, I just use pure ink. Pure ink. And uh, it might be too wet, so you need to um, make sure it's, it's not too wet. And use the brush is not uh, too dripping wet, you know. Uh, I just dot the eye uh, uh, with a little dash and let it smear so you and, you and you can blot it again. And I know it's too big, but that's okay, you know. It just uh, so I, I when I draw it's only a line and become a, a oval shape, that's okay. Um, and then just uh, a stroke for the beak, like that. And do it have a pause at the, um, at the end, right? And then uh, the legs. Here's the trick. Uh, you, you need to, I mean, the point is you, you need to bend a little bit, but not uh, forward at, at the angle. You just pay attention to the angle. So this is the upper leg and then the lower one because they stand in the water so you, you just paint a partial without painting the feet I don't like that painting the feet anyway so it's standing in the water and then this one just uh, um, next to it not perfectly parallel I think to form a little angle the the leg is so um, strong and thin uh, very bony you don't have to paint like a pillow uh, to, su to support the, the hair. Just uh, very thin and thin and long. And then now the brush is quite dry, right? So I, I, uh, I can make it a little split. You can use your finger or just uh, press uh, on the palette, uh, just to kind of twist a little bit, make it uh, split flat like this, and just do some uh, dry brush. Some overlapping with the wet, so it it um, smear a little bit, and you can repeat if you want on the dry part, but don't um, draw too much. Just uh, remember that it's like a calligraphy stroke. It's very, very important. And then uh, with the same brush, dry brush, you can do this uh, very elegant. Uh, I just just do one, but uh, actually in life they might come, you know, with a more than one or two, uh, a group of uh, long um, fur kind of uh, shaggy hair, and also on the on the under the neck, just dry brush, dry, just you know a hint, you know, could be uh, two or three doesn't matter as long as you uh, you get that feel of the shagginess. Um, that's the characteristic of a great bull heron, uh, different from uh, the uh, cranes. They don't have it. All right. And uh, if you like, you can do another one. But uh, um, usually, they they just um, stay alone. You know, doing a f uh, fish uh, fishing or just. Uh, but uh, in spring season, they might have this kind of uh, uh, matting or things. So, but uh, in painting, you know, we, we paint them like humans. So in this uh, painting, I try to um, paint a couple. Um, but yeah, you see, I just realized that it's too close to the center. It's a very common mistake. All, all, you know, all of us try to make. Everything is centered. So you don't have room for, the, for another one. I mean, I have to do it maybe behind a little bit, so a little bit different from the um, the painting and the sample. So, but I try to make the beak parallel to form a pattern kind of. So we can just do this one behind. And this neck is a little long, and just use leftover ink. So this is the chest. In the front view, and just a little bit back, something like that, and can just take. See, I I try to um, treat. We call it um, 
Twitch the ink almost like a black gold. <laughs> treasure, tre the, you know, treasure the, the, the uh, ink as gold, which means uh, you, you don't use a lot of ink, just one, one drop of ink almost to do the, the whole thing, right? To just touch another. Make sure it's dry and pointed. Just do a little. This time, I make sure the eye is not smear. Just dry. You can always enlarge it, right? And then um, the beak. I try to make it uh, parallel to form a interesting um, composition. Okay. And then this one doesn't have to paint the legs. Um, it's behind. You won't see that. Uh, we we'll use uh, you can use a smaller brush if you want uh, to do the do the uh, cattail or some some uh, plants. Right? And you can just mix a little yellow with this green color to get. Blue, oh, I mean, a blue and a yellow get green, and uh, uh, you can get, you can, you can have a little brown. Let me just use this convenient kick. So just add a little brown to, to the green, or make it uh, muted. Just some dirty color, but diluted, or make a nice gray. Blue, green, blue, uh, gray, or green, gray, kind of. Um, just a little yellow to give this a screen. You can paint it more brown, like in autumn or uh, winter. And uh, this is more like a uh, spring, spring kind. So just uh, think about like an orchid, you know, three, but uh, you don't have to do that kind of uh, bending leaves. Just hide the feet part, maybe, to suggest a bit of shoots, uh, new, new growth. In spring, maybe that's. We have a little in the back as well, just a suggest overlapping suggest uh, this uh, suggest uh, gaps. Okay, and um, just a little bit and. Uh, and uh, Do the cap tail just uh, get a brown, red kind of color. You can get a little bit blue, so you get almost uh, purple. And uh, I try to. Pinch, uh, like a triangle, right? Okay, and then you can put a little dot on top. That's it. And the line could be a little longer, I guess. There. Um, don't be afraid to. Break the the frame. You know, suggest um, more painting outside the frame. Uh, it leads the uh, viewer's imagination into infinity. Okay, we can have a little larger. I mean, a little taller one. Yeah. Just the. Uh, Lot is gold, I guess. 
Okay, finally you can put the city into We don't really do the um, the water, you can, you can, uh, because in, in um, flower and bird category thing, we don't paint like horizon or like, distance, uh, basically just uh, uh, the main um, animal or flowers or plants. <coughs> so you can write a poem with long inscription or just a short one with date and the signature. I, guess, I think maybe on this side is better. So I'll wait it to dry. Any any um, questions on, on painting parents? Hmm. Now this paper is uh, not uh, very easy to do. Maybe I try. I'll try another kind of paper. Um, it's a semi size. You can see the difference. Maybe. You can also use mobile paper. Mulberry paper uh, is the uh, best smearing. It's, this is semi size. Let me just show you the difference. Okay. Get some uh, light gray. And you can, you can mix a little bit of uh, rouge to get a little purple kind of. Lavender. Okay. I try to duplicate uh, the, that. So this time I make sure this is near the the left side, more close to the left. Yeah. And then just, this one is is more um, folded. This this neck is folded like that, and the the other one is more extended. But I need to do the beak first and avoid that. It's not perfectly flat. It could be a little uh, lean to to the front. Okay. Oops. Should be here. And they try to find the gravity center. So it's not uh, uh, too too away from that. Some many people paint the legs too uh, too in the back or too much um, uh, on the front. That's uh, not good. Try you know usually just one leg could could be enough to stand the weight and then you can just draw with a dry brush the tail you don't usually do the the you know the details with, uh, on the uh, like wings just do the uh, think about uh, the, the uh, solar weight so like you see from very distant you don't really see any uh, details just the, the profile and this one it goes down and then just overlapping behind that. So this is the, the chest. And make sure this leg is uh, shorter because in perspective it's behind, right? So this is not a, cannot go longer than this side, otherwise you'll feel awkward. Okay. And this can go up a little bit, just vary a little bit the angle. So 
And this angle change makes a uh, big difference. Uh, uh, you dry brush, I dry the brush with the uh, tissue and then just do the crown. Uh, oops, too dry. The, because this paper does not smear, you, get, you have to get a little more moisture. It's kind of hard uh, to repeat. Okay. You have to paint slowly, maybe. And you can do the shaggy hair. Just the stretching. Alright. And this time we can um, we can just splatter. Uh, the best brush to do that is to use the bristle. This kind of uh, barbecue brush or paint brush with very um, thin bristle. It's not designed to hold the moisture, so it's easier to get splatters. Like uh, here, I got uh, some light blue. Very thin and just. Uh, tap on top of it, like this, and hold it a little higher if you want to, uh, the dots, the, the spider uh, loose, you know, just like that. And you can change the color with uh, some dark, and you know, but I just uh, make it easy, just one single should be fine. Usually at the end with the, um, the you know the fewer pigment you will get lighter ones. So this kind of rhythm you cannot get by dotting. So spatter really um, creates the rhythm, the atmosphere, that kind of uh, um, yeah. it's wet into wet, so it's still um, it gets near, but it doesn't matter if you um, if you get more experience, you you know um, how to take advantage of this kind of uh, uh, happy mistakes. Okay, just uh, don't try to control everything. Just you know, it's a it's a spontaneous uh, um, spontaneous style. You need to. Uh, fully engaged in the in the uh, accidental in the natural um, transformation ch and the change of the color. So if you keep going once with one loading, you'll get all the variations. If you try to to uh, um, mix your color at every uh, after each stroke, then you will lose that continuity, the spontaneity. Okay, that's a uh, uh, semi-sized paper. So you can see that the, the paint stays on the paper surface uh, and the bleed you know slowly. You can you can even take some away before it uh, fully absorbed just by by um, blotting something like this. And you can write uh, longer line. I put I put on this side. Yes, I think it's better. Um, just uh, a pair uh, of uh, um, water birds. See. Oh, actually, oh, white, white, it's uh, white cranes. I'll just write this water birds because this doesn't have to be crane or or, or egg, uh, egrets, right? Or, or some anything, it could be just a uh, what, are, what I call it water birds. Mm -hmm. 
if you need, I didn't think about uh, the, the work after that. Um, I, I wrote uh, standing by water, but we got already got water. I wrote put the water there. So standing by rock or something. I just put a rock. When I do rock, I'm thinking about uh, large, medium, and small, and then sparse and the dense, right? Um, so you don't you don't paint uh, same size or same uh, distance. Just vary them and look at the whole whole um, pattern. Seal and the signature is part of uh, uh, the composition. I, I just wrote randomly uh, the pair of uh, water birds in Los Angeles. Okay, and Los Angeles uh, is a famous sound. The, the, the word, uh, the name of the city look, uh, sounds like uh, uh, Angeles, um, Angeles City, right? And in Chinese, is uh, the, the, the rock. Qi means rock, yeah, in the water. Okay, and uh, I'll just sign on the side. It's the word. The size of the, the seal should match the characters. And this small camera is a very small seal. Okay. All right, let's uh, um, go to the next subject matter. And I'll use a, a different uh, paper also. I use a uh, mulberry paper. We have three kind of, um, or maybe five, numbered, uh, but they are basically all made of the same um, material. It's mulberry bark fiber, and uh, this is number one. It has a uh, less long fiber. The number two has streaming fiber in it. So this one is uh, smoother. It could be uh, used for anything. 
the stringing fiber one is good for maybe animals and the uh, landscape. Uh, actually, I could use number two if you would. So this this next subject matter is uh, the cat. Okay, and I'll start with the dark. We always start with the dark. Dark is the dark. Um, so if you, if you divide <coughs> the penny into uh, squares, the four squares, this this head part is uh, above. Uh, it's on this part. It's about a uh, the third, you know, from this side maybe. Okay, so I start from the uh, the ears. The ear uh, facing the, the viewer, kind of, you see the inside, right? And this could be a little uh, side view. So this one is more front, uh, just turning to the to the front, towards towards the viewer. Uh, this is a calico cat, cat, right? We have to do it fast, so it will not uh, um, dry before we do the wash. And the, uh, if you draw a triangle, on the bottom it will be the nose, and the, the eye is uh, in between, okay, the, the ear and the, the nose. And uh, uh, this ear, could, I mean this eye could be a little closer, I think, but it's okay. I draw a little kind of like a yellow tiger's uh, pattern on the uh, near the the forehead on the forehead a little bit like that and you can draw some pattern on the side of the uh, the head maybe but basically it's all concentrated on the top part the lower part is white right and uh, then we have to to use different color ink for the white what the white for at this point, I just draw um, with dry brush. Just draw the dark, the dark. And uh, you can paint little pattern. The black spot. You can add more uh, when when the color uh, is still wet later to get more. But at this point, the dark is dark. Just. Uh, have the whole picture, so you don't need you don't work uh, just a, a single part. You you work the whole thing. I think it's better to use two brushes, one with a light ink, so you can start to draw the features. Okay, here we I just do a little triangle, uh, do a small one. Maybe and here just like a check, a little check mark. Just like that. If it's too uh, wet, you blot it. Okay, and then I dilute it with. Uh, uh, I just blend it with some uh, some blue, some yellow, maybe you got green, a uh, gray. I mean, you can use ink and water to get some gray, some warm gray. You can add a little, little red into it and draw this split mouth kind of there's a split in this pleat uh, in the center right and then the, uh, the jaw like that and then this uh, loose uh, long hair on the chick uh, on the side of the chick the whisker will come later we don't, we don't draw the long whisker yet. Well, I'll use this detail brush to do that. And you can draw some beard, like a, like a Santa's beard, you know, long hair under the, on the, uh, on the neck. Okay, and you can use this uh, brush to roughly paint a little uh, texture, you know, just to exhaust the brush. Uh, here we, we, we can indicate the, uh, one of the power here, just fold it, and this is a like a here, just a little big power here. Can you see it? Yeah. Very light, right? 
and then I, I, I change back to the the dark one just to, uh, paint a little pattern on the on the uh, body too and you can uh, you can add more later but at this time I will use uh, uh, any soft large brush let me use this wrist brush you can just use uh, I have to clean this blue brush I just did with a, a super wash you can clean the brush when you change the color you have to right. and then I use a brown color from this Sumi color block and you can add a little yellow to to it to make it uh, uh, lighter and uh, let me just do it a little bit with the green and then add a little more brown so on the f on the face we want a little uh, stronger I think the color I got on the handout I mean on this picture is more yellowish and yellow and the, and the brown or amber so just use a lot of color you can use a, a clean brush to dampen the area just like you know the lower part of the eye to, or the side of the eye to be you can use water and put just put some water first if you use semi-sized paper that's how we get this the uh, paper uh, to to create some more interesting you can you can dry you know the paint with a clean brush also on sized or semi-sized paper on raw paper you, you don't have to do this wet into wet you can just paint directly but this paper is more um, forgiving for beginners okay and uh, just exhaust this because this is darker to begin with then you just add water if you need it to complete the other part just add some uh, colors use the whole brush and you can split the brush by uh, pressing hard and then twist a little bit Again, I, I pay attention on the size of the, the pattern. So there's a big brown here, medium, um, and then you know, some small. They're not the same size. Right? You, can, you can have alternation of uh, white and dark, uh, black and uh, brown. Three colors, the, the uh, turquoise, right here, or calico cat. Okay, if you want a little bit of uh, color here, you can just uh, you can use a soft brush to blur it with, with some uh, very light uh, gray or just water to let it bleed into the, the lower part. So I, you know, sometimes we just want some kind of Smearing. I wish you can just repeat a little bit. We'll create that kind of softness. And then finally, I'll use a little uh, rouge. You can use uh, white, but it is not necessary. Just use water, dilute the rouge, and just put uh, inside. You can leave white. Uh, don't have to fill in all the blank. You know, just just a stroke, a suggestion of. Uh, inside okay. and um, don't forget the whiskers we have a red whisker brush we have actually a, a three different sizes this is the larger one you can use smaller one if you like um, dry the brush so it's not dripping and then use pure ink and then just uh, hold the brush high so you, in the, uh, just let the brush do the work for you because this is a very easy easy tool to do the whiskers okay. 
this paper does not absorb so much, so you, you can paint slower. You can overlap uh, crossing a little bit. And don't forget, there are also whiskers above the eye, like eyebrows. <laughs> eyebrow. The eye should be darkest. All right. Any um, questions? You can you can use a little pink to hint the just a, a highlight a little bit on the uh, part the front. I don't do that cross. Just a, you know, very loosely. You can you can add black if you need to to create um, more interesting. Like here, you if you like, you can paint wet into wet and let it smear. Okay. And some con contrast between dark and the light, very important. Just let it bleed. It's kind of hard to control everything, so you don't. If you give up control, you gain the freedom and the, the, and the, and the uh, joy of this kind of painting. If you try to control, um, you, you will get frustrated. Henry, yes. we have a question about the mulberry paper you use. Is this number two? Number one. You oh, number, number one. Two. Yeah, number two has some streaming fiber. I don't have it in hand right now. So it it, it should work the same. OK. Mm -hmm. I, I, here I signed with my studio name. So I just do it. Yeah. Just the signature where you don't want people to read sometimes. Uh, you can just write grass style. I can use larger seal on this. It's better to put a, a little pad or something into a magazine or book. Great. Usually the seal should go under the signature. The sample I have here is that the seal goes on top, which is not uh, standard. Okay. We, we're supposed to do four, right? We have to move on. So the, the next uh, we'll do um, panda. All right, you ready? Yes, we're ready. Um, should I use the uh, mulberry still? I can use the uh, what? What other paper you want to see? I can use the raw paper. I think probably you are already familiar with the unsized uh, raw paper. Let me see. Okay. Um, Oh, this goldfish will come later. Yeah, this is the handout. Yeah, I made all this handout around uh, 90, early 90s when I taught uh, at the experimental, experimental college in uh, at Seattle on the uh, campus of uh, UW. It's like a, uh, it's not an extension program, it's run by the student union. Um, and I taught almost eight years with uh, lots of students. Anyway, anyway um, the panda. Uh, let me let me um, show you how do I conceive 
the panda face okay, by dressing up like a panda. Now you can see a, a, a panda uh, painting I did uh, recently with the acrylic on my hat. Right? And you can see that. And you can see um, the two big black ears and the two mask, um, dark ma mask like uh, sunglasses. Uh, let me show you this big picture. So it's like this. It's not too tall. It's, it's, it's here. And there's a um, muzzle. I just use this mask like a bear, you know, not like a cat. But, and uh, this is about the decision. You know, it's like a, um, the uh, reading glass position. Because uh, you see, like you, you read, um, you, you wear the, the glass this this way, right? <laughs> <laughs> you got it? Yeah. That's cute. <laughs> <laughs> But that's a good way to remember how their face, the you know, the yeah, composition yeah. of their face. Yeah, yeah, so I just keep wearing this. Let's see, now we're going to draw the panda face. Right. <laughs> I cannot uh, see if you wear, wear this glass. This one. Mm -hmm. Okay, now we'll, we'll use a uh, soft brush. Just the, like uh, basic soft or, or stiff and soft combination, if you like, uh, because we need quite a quite a bit of uh, ink. So you use pure ink, black ink, basically, and get uh, add some water so you get uh, a dark, very dark, for the for the dark part. And you can add. Uh, more dark, more dark at the, the, the tip. So when you start, it's uh, the darkest, right? So let's do um, a mother baby or something. Um, I, I do this one on the upper right. Okay. So I usually start. Uh, you can always plan your your. Composition just by drawing with your fingertip. Just uh, uh, draw two circles like a, a figure eight. You know, one big one under it, and one one um, on top, and then the arm divide, divide them. Okay. Uh, notice the white uh, white uh, back neck. Um, so the the arm. It's lower, you see. This is like this is white shoulder. Okay. And when they're eating or something, uh, the 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 head bends. I mean, f um, lean to the front. It's lower than the neck point. So it's a very cute look. Uh, just like we did the cat, you know, right? We do. Uh, you can do the the near here first. Which is larger and then the the uh, the, the, the other one uh, smaller, okay. And then uh, I I'll leave the uh, uh, I think on the handout it's not lower enough. Look at my face, right? It's uh, it's about here. So you do like this in a perspective. You know, it's one big, one small. The pupil is a uh, it's a near the top but you don't have to do the pupil don't don't worry about that and there's a little nose i, I put it dark here on my mask that's the uh, that's the face that's basically a triangle like that along the forehead it's big right yeah like a smart person <laughs> So if you have a short forehead, it will look uh, stupid, right? <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, all right, now I, I use a different brush as a, uh, a 
any brush and liner maybe um, just a, a pointed brush maybe. Uh, but you don't have to draw the um, continuous line you can just use dotted line it's fine like a um, dry brush you know so this is a this is the shape um, of the, the face okay you can do a big jar like that so it's uh, not perfectly round it's it's like a squash or some kind of a uh, pumpkin whatever um, a little squish it's good yeah. and then uh, maybe a suggestion of the the mouse but you don't have to do that but just paint the gesture is more important um, the feel of that and here I I will change a little bit uh, just make it a little angular because there's a bone here it, yeah make it a few um, angular uh, change of direction so it's not like a curve you know it's just like a round so there's a bone at upper arm uh, the lower arm something like that so that's right. so my brush is uh, dry I'll go back to the large the black one so that's the preparation. On this paper, I want to use uh, some wet to create the uh, smearing. Now I use pure ink on wet. Dry brushing also can help. Okay, and uh, just let it smear. Okay, you can you can use the uh, light brush again. Just need to do. the back um, of the arm is lighter. So this is the um, and there's the 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 dark con continues to the back, but it's gray grayish. Yeah. So that that creates kind of smearing furry effect. That's you know if you use a raw paper, the same thing. You don't need to do the preparation, the wet. Just um, with the gradation, you know, maybe it will create this kind of a smearing effect. Uh, on this paper, uh, you. I, I have to use uh, some water uh, or wet, kind of wet into wet. Okay, and this side, you can just suggest, yeah, just like that, you know, just one 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 stroke. It, it has all the details. Br dry brush, a little bit. Yeah, you see that? I always I almost see the finger, the nails. Uh, okay, the the body goes down like that but the bear or panda has a relatively large arm very uh, powerful arm forearm but uh, a small um, small short uh, leg maybe. so just like that and no no tail okay no tail And this side, you may see a little bit inside of the feet, and you don't have to, just a, a hint of the, the, the other side, you know, just, just a suggestion. If you don't know, just uh, omit it, or, yeah, you can, because I have a smaller panda here, you can, you can hide this feet with that, actually, it will be good. You can paint the head right here, if you wish. I think uh, I have to just follow the handout here. So this is the, the, the smaller panda. Uh, you can do the, the eye first if you want. Just the you know the the face with the eye glass, sunglass, and then make sure that e the ear is bigger than the eye and also above much higher than you think. Okay, now uh, the uh, the forearm is actually starting much behind. You can you can draw this top line, but you don't have to um, just uh, separate uh, the head from the back neck. And uh, this is a, a cute posture. It's looking you, you look from top down. I think you don't really see the the end of jaw. So you I just do that. And uh, this leg is in front of uh, 
to hit something like that. And again, I try to create some bony feel, not just the, the round. Just a little angle, angle. Okay. Let me just think of the other arm. I'm not sure exactly. Yeah, you have to paint negatively. That's the point. Yeah, you can draw the uh, the body with the, uh, light ink first, and then you put it in the dark. That's also possible. Um, just use two brushes, one dark and one light, and work together. Okay. Um, the bamboo is kind of hard by itself. So uh, in this. Uh, as a as a supporting goal, you don't have to do the you know the large bamboo. Just keep it small, so you don't have to uh, paint like a bamboo painting requirement. So just keep it uh, patternized leaf, very characteristic, like a pa uh, group of three. That kind of. So let me get some green. By mixing other colors, I got green, green color. Maybe you can mute it with a little ink. Okay, okay. so I usually do a diagonal branch like this. Okay, you, a lot of people try to hold the brush like this way. Actually, it should be this way when, when you do the stock. Straight. Okay. And uh, actually, the change uh, in width is not that much. Should should be a little even. Okay. Now let's do the leaves. But before that, you can draw some uh, some uh, twigs or. Branches, and you can draw another supporting stock. I use a little more ink. Try to avoid the dead center. So, um, okay, let me think. And this time just to I'll try to break the frame to divide the paper into different spaces. And you can uh, if I do the root you will see the short no no uh, joints. Like that, yeah. and you can even do a bamboo shoot like there. In spring, they come out. We got bamboo shoot in our garden. It's kind of hard to con contain in the flower bed. Okay, and you can do a, a short one. Oops. This is a longer one. Come out, okay. And then some uh, some leaf falling down there. It goes like a C or something. Okay, this is the basic stiff brush. Okay. And then I'll just use a little more green color to do the leaves. Three. You don't have to do um, too combi you know, detailed, you just uh, follow the, um, the feeling of it.
contains a sparse group of uh, large, small, and uh, medium. And don't be afraid to go outside and then uh, in. Okay. And you can hand some before the panda create some uh, overlapping. And I use this color kind of to uh, squeeze out the, the white. Okay, maybe too much uh, detail already. But you need to get some uh, very fresh leaves in, in, the, in the mouth, like uh, or just bare branches. They just finished. There. Some on the ground, maybe. Some falling. Just the atmosphere. And, uh, usually, don't do the ground. If you like, you can put some what we call the moss dots. Normally, uh, we don't use how we call it, just ink, maybe. to hide the, the root. Oh, Ambu has this kind of joint, the important feature characteristic. And probably I have learned um, bamboo already. So but in this painting, we just do the, uh, the bamboo in proportion to the bears, so not too big. They actually like to eat this kind of very small uh, leaf bamboo, not the giant one. Okay, let me just put a signature. I used the Chinese. Uh, year uh, ox this coats for 2021 you can just write last name and then use first name in the seal Actually, this is my first name, also. Then you, have, you can use uh, yeah, two seals in here. Um, yeah, that's, that's beautiful. Thank you. So, Henry, we have uh, one question uh -huh. um, about the paper. So, when you have a large sheet of paper and you need to divide it into smaller sheets, um, I saw you earlier, you fold it, and then you use a ruler to no, cut it? No, it's not a ruler. It's a bamboo cutter, bamboo okay. knife. Yeah. It's uh, made of uh, bamboo, so you can carry it on plan airplane without a problem. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's a, it won't... It's not a... Okay. Yeah, just a piece of bamboo. You can get from uh, Blue Heron Arts for I think eight dollars or nine seven nine nine something like that. Okay. Yeah. So do so you use cuts. other methods at all to cut paper or separate uh, just paper? Any any stationary cut, you know, like a cutter, leather cutters to do. Okay. Uh, some people use a uh, string or wet the you know folding line and tail tail. Okay. Uh, you can also use that. If you want to have the decorative edge, this kind of paper is characteristic with that kind of edge. If you want, oh. to, yeah, you can tear it uh, just the wet, the folding line, and then you you cut it. Uh, oh, that's right. Just wet. It, yeah. Just put paper uh, oh, water yeah, on the, that line, and right, then you can right. just tear it. Tear it. Yeah, tear it. Right. Tear it. Right. Okay. Um. So, how much time we have? Like ten, uh, fifteen minutes to yes. do the fish. Okay. Yes, yes. Fish next. 
So, uh, I will go back to the size shown for fish. The reason is that uh, you want to have the uh, the water line, the water line. Yeah. So, let me just pull it, and cut it. It's kind of dog cutter. <laughs> you you get this kind of natural uh, edge. It's, it's not not perfect, but just the. Okay, let's find the the handout. I didn't have the. Uh, I give you the straw guide for this one. If you want. Um, you can review that too later. But uh, let me just do it uh, here based on this. This is not my <coughs> painting, but it's the best uh, artist uh, artist who is most uh, famous for for this kind of uh, fish painting. Uh, his name is Wu Zuoren. You can find the video in my channel that, um, with his uh, demo. Okay, let me just uh, create some light. I tried to take advantage of some color left. So we got some gray, kind of gray, um, blue gray, maybe. maybe. For the, the white. Uh, fish, we use a uh, very light ink. Uh, if you use pure ink, it's like a 1% or 2%. Very, very light. Yeah. So, um, let me use the tissue to test. So, the brush bottom is kind of too dark. Right now, I need to lighten it. This is a calligraphy. Brush, so you got dark residual there. So be careful. If you if you press too hard, you may get the dark. It's that kind of brush. So just clean the brush thoroughly. I think. Okay, now I I do this uh, in in the stroke order uh, as uh, on the uh, in in the demo of the master. So let me, let me see if it's a vertical better. Yeah, vert vertical with a uh, water. Um, what are it is, right? So you, you, you plan that uh, corner first. You, you, don't, you don't want to touch that. And then the fish is uh, not in the dead center. The, the head is uh, about a quarter, I mean, the golden spot, the thirds, yeah, right there. And then you put a little oval shaped dot, and then you lift the brush, kind of pull the brush uh, to create this. Uh, uh, bridge between the body and the, the, the tail, right? You kind of continue, actually, do, without lifting it, you can do this. Roll the brush and pull, and then um, just the other side is a narrow, so just roll to the, and then pull. And then uh, it's like bamboo leaf stroke in the middle. So you just, uh, this is too straight, right? So it should be a little curve down. You cannot change it on this kind of paper. And uh, you just try to add a little tip that goes down a little bit. Maybe it will leave a mortar mark in between. So don't change it. And then, if you want, you can add the fins right away. I think. Just like that, it's simplified into three, and then you know actually the this part of the tail could be uh, four. Again, he he used a piece of uh, blotting paper to stop stop it from bleeding. That's extremely important. Okay, and uh, I'll add the mouse later. And we, we can continue with that black fish. Let me just use all the ink here. To start with a, a light, but uh, darker than this. Okay. So this time I do the body in two strokes. Okay. Okay. One left and one. Uh, so again, I, I, I try to find the golden spot. 
the golden rule. It has a turn, so this could be like that first. And then the bridge, okay, see that? The bridge. If you're not sure, you, you can draw a, a, a template and put it underneath the rice paper as a guide, stroke guide. You can print out that stroke guide line and put underneath. Yeah. And then uh, two, two sides of uh, the, the tail. Okay. And uh, I'll lighten it because the tail is lighter. I just add water and uh, dry it. So you can test it. Okay. Uh, press. Okay, here's the, the trick. You roll the brush a little bit like this. You roll, roll and then pull. Kind of press and then roll. So the brush uh, tip goes to the right and then pull. You pull, roll this side and then pull. And then this is a side stroke. Like that. Okay, feel the fish. If we, you know, feel the fish swimming in the water. And uh, when, when the fish makes turn, this fin is like that. Stretch and compress. This this side should be a little more compressed, I think. This stretch. Okay. Anyway, just try to fit to feel if you're a new swimmer, you know what I'm talking about. Okay. Now this this fish has a telescope eye called dragon eye. And you can use a little white for highlight. And then uh, the mouse is part. And you can use a smaller brush. So this is a smaller brush is easier for control the smear. And blotting. Blotting. Okay. And then the fish mouse splot. So important with the, the tissue in, in, in uh, left hand. Okay. And then this fish has a red crown. Okay. I use it because it's in a dried color from the tube. I just uh, open the tube and put it in a container like this. You can use fancy ones like the ceramic uh, saucers or uh, we have special Special stacking trays. You can, you can keep them. So this is a. Uh, let's add some more. From here. And uh, just try to create this uh, shape. Is the fish scale on this side a little bit? It's actually longer than the first stroke you know, in front of the. The first stroke is uh, starting uh, behind the the head, yeah. and then there's a mouth protruding there, and the ear. I mean, the the ear her eyes is uh, uh, behind on the side of this, and you. You don't have the large uh, pop eye, so just a dot. Oops. Ah, scare. It just sm smear too much, huh? Just blot. A little bit there. It's a hint of the, the other eye. And then you use light ink, I think, for the double line uh, the tip the lip and okay it got smeared so just a hint of that you see that yeah okay so that's uh that's the fish now i'm going to do the background we are a little over time no we have, we have no started. we're fine we're fine five minutes oh <laughs> god i i i'm very glad don't have to Okay, now I'm going to do um, 
the leaf with a little bit uh, uh, color. Maybe it's good. Just just take all this color and wash the dish. You know, sometimes and uh, you can use a little little root, a little um, mineral color. It's good. So this color is uh, darker than actually this fish should be a little darker. I will add some darker there later. So um, a big uh, big stroke for the sleeping we call it sleeping lily in Chinese uh, water lily. Yeah. So again, breaking the, the breaking that edge. Suggest uh, um, more painting outside the frame. Um, large, medium, small. Okay, already there. And you can have another group uh, here uh, and this here. Okay, that's it. I think that the other spot is a, a character uh, smeared. But that's not that leaf. So this is the. This is probably a side view or something. Doesn't matter. There, there should be a little, um, in reality, some 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 uh, ridge on the on the side, showing the, the curve curly part of the the characteristic of the. Yeah. I'll just add a little ridge to the tender leaves as well. And then you, you can you can wait a little bit longer to do the veins. Uh, you can use hair dryer. Um, I'll just let it bleed. You see the the sample painting has a lot of bleeding. It's it's beautiful. If you just you know have this line stiff like this, it's not interesting at all. You you want it to to uh, mix together to bleed. So just let it bleed. Very soft. Bleeding, you know, shows that's not important. The hard uh, lines, hard element is here. Okay. And this, uh, starting from the split, you know, there's a, a, a split. It's not in the center, actually. Uh, the split on that sample pane is very clear, but uh, uh, let me just do it opposite ways. So I, I think I, I have a different direction, maybe. And just for the small uh, leaf, just just put a dot or something. And uh, here's another one. So the veins is, uh, on the lighter uh, leaves is also lighter, and dark is darker. And it's beautiful uh, to have the smear, right? So don't be Great of smear and the watermark really helped to give the the structure uh, the separate the the parts you know the create a nice line there as if you could see the watermark on raw paper is beautiful that's the characteristic of uh, shuan paper shuan 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 okay. Uh, oh, there's little tiny yellow flowers. Uh, let me just draw that. It's outlined, just a, a different style uh, from the, the fish. Because let me just have this kind of tulip shape. By the way, it's a tulip blooming there. It's beautiful, northwest the tulip. Yeah, it's beautiful everywhere. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I missed that. Okay, I used to live in uh, western, western uh, Washington. And it's uh, near uh, Nakona, you know, the, the tulip fields. Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, let me draw the stem. It's uh, just like a calyx, right? Just a little short Y shape. Y shape. Uh, I realized there's a rhythm also. So two, I got this two, two, two parallel. So it could be, this could be two maybe. We'll just suggest whatever. Okay, I'm going to sign it. Um, 
it, it's dedicated to someone there, so I just write a uh, uh, happy fish picture. If you know the story, happy fish. You the conversation with the Hui Shu. The two happy fish painting. Your, if you feel happy, you can sense the, the fish. That's the, the idea. If you if you don't have a ha happy mood, every even if you see the happy fish or hear the happy music, you won't you won't uh, feel it or see it. That's the idea of the Chinese aesthetic. And in ancient time, they think uh, the mood is a very important uh determines the uh, yeah. the sensor the senses spring okay. spring days uh, actually this is a Qingming. oh the yesterday was Qingming. Right? it's a festival memorial day <laughs> anyway Oh. Okay. And that's uh, my signature. And uh, that's the seal. Uh, let me show. Let me get the correct one. This is my last name. You can use a separately to. Seals. I have Li here. Sometimes I use a uh, three because if this is count to one. Uh, that's the bar. So you can put a seal on the corner also if you want, if you like. It's called a banner's foot seal or corner seal. But um, for this painting, I want to because this area need a lot of uh, space for. For the fish to to uh, swim, so um, let me just highlight the dorsal fin a little bit. Uh, you know, you can just add a little dark. Okay, and the dot the. I don't think you you can see the pupil, but just the hint maybe. Be good enough. It's beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. That's wow, cool. your timing is amazing. And <laughs> <laughs> I would um, include some highlights in our next newsletter. And so um, if you don't mind, um, I'll send you email. the picture. Yeah. Yeah, the pictures you painted today. So that would be wonderful. Okay. And thank you so much, Henry. This is such a pleasure to meet you <laughs> on Zoom. Nice to see you too. Yeah. And um, hopefully we can uh, get to uh, see your demo again uh, later. Uh, so that oh, would be you. wonderful. Yeah. 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 Okay, so we will uh, post the recording video on our Facebook and we can also send mm -hmm. you the link yeah. so you can also post on your Facebook, Henry. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, that would be wonderful. Yeah, I yeah. have the uh, live broadcast on YouTube right now. So um, thank you everybody for watching on YouTube. <laughs> uh, today I just broadcasted my demo on YouTube at the same Great. time. Great. Yeah. Great. So I'll send thank you the link you. as well. Okay, thank you. Yes, yes, yes. That will be wonderful. Yeah. Okay, thank you very much. That's for today's uh, demo, and uh, it's been a wonderful experience. So, everybody, please take care. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you Henry. Everybody. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much. <laughs> Bye-bye.